Good evening. Now, immediately you get back into oneness. Just one, just spirit for one, for spirit. For no reason. without object, without form, without person. Be interested in one for itself. And there really is no mystery in this or the reason why we should seek the kingdom of God for its self alone. Seek oneness for its self alone, as we heard in the last class. If we wish to have more light, it is perfectly logical that we seek the light for the light. And so we know that God is all, one is all, oneness is all, despite appearance. Forget appearance. And seek one. We wish to have an ever greater living awareness of just one for its own sake. We're interested in one just for its sake. It is the infinite. It is omniscience. And so, although... perhaps as we first start getting used to living truthful being, living oneness, it may seem boring, it may seem difficult, it may seem uninteresting, perhaps. It may seem a struggle to live as one because my senses tell me that all this whole world needs my attention. Even for me to survive... There are aspects of my experience that need attention. This is what belief, that little devil, will tempt us to believe and will try to pull us back into. But surely by now we know just enough of the truth that God actually is all. And God is one. Oneness is all. The void The nothingness actually, paradoxically, is all. So we wish to fill ourselves with oneness. Begin to hear oneness, see oneness, feel oneness. Living us, filling us. And it really doesn't take too long before oneness is riveting. Oneness is something we can't leave alone because it is omniscience itself. It is bliss itself. It is paradise itself. It's God. It is wisdom. It's Self, life, its self.
in humanity, budding doctors devote how many years to studying life? The body. What is it? Ten. More years. Studying life. Studying the body. But by making the one move to oneness, we have available to us all fully formed and manifested and all fully demonstrated form and manifestation of life itself, infinite life itself, omnipresent life itself, eternal life itself. It doesn't take ten years, it takes ten seconds. And as we are devoted to oneness, devoted to God, as we truly love oneness, love God, we will discover that that devotion, that continual seeking of it for its own sake, fills our entire being with itself. Which means, fills our entire conscious awareness of itself. It is already the fullness of you and I and everyone. You and me and everyone and everything. But it is all about conscious awareness, consciously living truthfully, conscious truthful identity. And so very quickly we discover that oneness is filling and overflowing as our conscious awareness. And we literally have access to life itself, the life that is God itself. We literally have access to infinite form. We literally have access to peace and harmony and joy and love. And we find that we are these things and we are the influencing presence of these aspects of truth to and as and for our world. Our experience. As we know that oneness actually is the only again we should take that one sentence and live with it until we find it literally living us which is actually the way we should take all truth. As oneness lives us More accurately, as we are now being oneness. We are the being of oneness, not multiplicity, not materiality. We are spiritual being. We've awakened to our truth. And spiritual being is oneness. Therefore, the whole of God fully existent already, fully manifest and demonstrated already, perfectly visible and tangible and real already. As we are the being of oneness, as our thoughts are all about oneness, our desire is to know more, experience more of oneness for its sake, never for a reason. Apart from knowing it for its own sake, which is really an unknowing. Let me experience more of oneness without knowing, without ever knowing. Let me never know again. Oh, what a release that is. Let me never know. I don't need to know. Does this room need to know the truth of sunlight? 
in order to be filled full with it. No. Do the leaves, the trillions and gazillions of leaves all around the world, need to know about greenness in order to be filled full of green? Does the jasmine need to know about that blissful fragrance in order to gift it freely to the world? Do we need to know about God in order to witness God as our entire experience? No. And if we try, we fail. So let me seek oneness for itself alone, without ever knowing, and realising I never need know. I never was expected to know. I never was expected to realise. How can I realise when I'm nothing? Only God realises. Only God is the realisation. And if we realise anything, it's God as realised something, whatever it is we're realising. Just give up this local sense of self, personal sense of self that feels a responsibility towards awakening. Your only responsibility in mine and Gautama's and Jesus's is to get out of the way. Know that God is all, for sure. Know that truth. Know why God appears as it does, as this world, starting with this mind, this body, and then everything expansively of experience. What is that? We were told it's one of the many mansions in my father's house. It's just a degree of consciousness. Mind, forms, and here we have a world and universe full of form and everything in it and of it of form. But there's no mystery it is simply the form of the mind, one of the many mansions in my father's house. Therefore, God and nothing but God. Innocent, pure, beautiful, blissful, infinite, omnipresent, incorporeal, eternal. Of omniscience, of omnipotence. Unchanged, nothing can change God, nothing does. Once we know, let's call them those two truths. Once we know that, and we do, and if we think we don't, then go back and listen, because all of it is there, and it's clearer than it ever has been. Then our only job is to be rid of this sense of us, that takes responsibility, that thinks it's an assistant, thinks it has to do something in life, achieve something in life, create, maintain, pacify, harmonize. Understand. Understand. Thank you. Or stop misunderstanding. Don't be confused. You have to know the truth. Jesus told us, know the truth, and that very truth will set you free. Well, really, the only two truths you need to know that indeed set you free are the ones we've just heard. One, what is God? Is God all? Yes, God is all. What is God? What is that all? The incorporeal, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, eternity of being. The infinity of being, the truth of being, spirit, as all, as oneness. Oneness is God, and the whole of the macro of experience is actually right here as oneness. Uh, 
And the second truth is why the world appears as it does. And we know that. And why, if we do not know its truth, we are living in the pairs of opposites. We know that. We don't have to repeat all this. If you want to repeat it, then it's all on classes, beautifully, clearly explained. Now, with those two truths, all we have to do is lose this sense of involvement. Our only job is to be about the Father's business, and that is to be about the consciousness of oneness. Because in and as oneness, all is. All. And that all is God. Good, perfection, completeness, bliss, effortlessness, eternity. The very second you attain the consciousness of oneness, you have the whole of God. That's always true. You always have the whole of God. You are nothing but... But now you tangibly have the whole of God. And what is that? You tangibly have the whole of oneness. Don't you dare start thinking objectively right now. The whole of God is the whole of oneness. Don't come out of spirit. You are spiritual being and spirit and spiritual being and spiritual experience is the experience and the beingness of oneness. Why? Because that oneness contains the whole of God, the whole of life, the whole of eternity. Not just a few years or a few moments or a career or a family life or a something, something. The whole of eternity. The whole of omnipresence. The whole of omniscience, the whole of form. There is only one form. And yes, it looks like a trillion, billion, gazillion different forms as the mind observes oneness. It appears to be the many members, the multiplicity. But do not be fooled. Spiritual consciousness, spiritual being cannot be fooled. All is spirit and all is one. Out of that oneness, all comes, all is experienced. Out of oneness, 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 the void, God, the Word. In the beginning, there was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word is oneness. Now, as you learn, now, this minute, this hour, the next, the next, every step, every breath, morning, noon and night, to live as the consciousness of oneness, keeping your mind on oneness, this minute, next minute, every step, morning, noon and night, whilst you're in the world. We'll get back to the world in a moment. But you can easily keep the consciousness of oneness no matter what your senses are doing, your experience is doing. Easily. 
It's the simplest thing. There's only one thing to do. Can't be much simpler than that. Then you will discover yourself literally minute by minute, as long as you keep going, being filled with the conscious awareness of oneness, ever greater. And you will never know as much peace, you will never know as much freedom, you will never experience as much bliss, love, happiness, You will never be as untouchable, undisturbable, unaffectable. You will never be as invisible to materiality. And you will find that without ever having taken a single thought, because all your thought is on oneness, getting on with the Father's business, getting on with oneness's business, truth's business, spirit's business, you will find without ever taking a thought for it, without, without ever scratching your head, without ever wondering why and how, you experience beautiful, often miraculous sufficiency of every place, every condition, every moment, every hour, every day. Sufficiency of all arrives. I love Victoria's imagery of the marbles rolling down towards you. Indeed, the whole of life opens up and gives its good to you. Why is that? Because you are the God of your experience, of your world. And so that God is oneness. And when you are the truth of your world, when you are the Lord that is the Lord of the earth and the fullness thereof, in other words, when the fullness of your conscious awareness is of oneness, being oneness, then you discover that that oneness is indeed one with you as experience. All the good of the earth opens up and flows towards you and arrives at the very spot you are and fills up any seeming need. Very, very often it arrives before you're even aware of a need. And really, I can assure you, you're disinterested in the way things appear, so you really very rarely are aware of a need. You're thinking of oneness. You're consumed with oneness. As Rumi says, you're drunk with oneness. You're drunk with God. That's a beautiful inebriation to experience. And so you're really quite unaware. All you are aware of is harmony. Sometimes you witness it before you get there. Sometimes you witness it arriving a few seconds or a few minutes after you got there. And that's your fault. And if I witness it, it's my fault. Why? I wasn't in oneness enough. Before you call, I will answer. So if you don't see the answer, you don't see the sufficiency, then it's us that were not quite fast enough to see it, not quite pure, not quite one enough. But that's okay. It really doesn't matter. It's going to be here in a few seconds or a few minutes. You witness miracles. Why? Because you are being the miracle. And what is that? Oneness.
the consciousness of oneness, the God consciousness. All good form cannot keep away from the experience of the consciousness of oneness. Take that sentence and write it down or tattoo it in your palm and live with it. All good form cannot keep away from the experience of the consciousness of oneness. It's impossible. No one and nothing in the entire universe can keep your good and your utter fulfillment of good from your experience when you are being the constant consciousness of oneness. You've tipped over and you're living your truth now. And here we hear it. Where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. And it is utterly impossible to keep that liberty away from the experience of the Lord. Where the presence of oneness is, there is liberty. There is food, there is life, there is happiness, there is joy, there is freedom. And it's utterly impossible for anyone or anything to keep it away from you. It's utterly impossible. Why is that true? Because there isn't anyone or anything happening in your consciousness but oneness. If there is, then you have to suffer it to be so at the moment until you manage to get rid of that other still living in your consciousness. If you believe still there's another power out there somewhere stopping good from being right here, where actually it is already, then that's your problem. You have to suffer it to be so at the moment. And so will the people that are relying on you. Your kingdom. Your family, your loved one. Your students, your customers, your clients, your marketplace, your neighbourhood, your world. They will have to live, unfortunately, without that liberty because, only because, you or I are not being the consciousness of oneness. We're being what we think of as oneness, but we're still entertaining the possibility that there's another power out there and that's why this food isn't here for all the people. Or this is why the dollars aren't here. Or this is why the war hasn't stopped. This is why the disease hasn't fled the body. No, that's nonsense. Utter nonsense. In the consciousness of oneness, only life is. Only abundant dollars are. Only food is. Plentiful food with 12 baskets full left over. Plentiful love with 12 baskets full left over. Plentiful happiness. Absolute and utter sufficiency of every place at every moment of experience. Why? Because experience is God. And God is absolutely, utterly fulfilled as everything, everywhere. So as we are the consciousness of it, which is the consciousness of oneness, rid of, completely rid of other powers, other things, even an and, even a breath, I don't want a breath, I just want God. So we're now paying attention to oneness and just walk over that little bridge that may be difficult to begin with for a short time, may be boring for a short while, may not be interesting to the intellect or to belief for a short while. Get over that, come on, because you're stepping right into Omniscience itself, wisdom itself, joy itself, bliss itself, life itself, love itself, harmony, peace itself, freedom itself, truth itself, fulfillment itself. How is that boring? So 
So those of us who are more intellectual, you will probably find this little period where your intellect isn't stimulated and you keep wanting to go back and be stimulated by some material interest. Well, get over it because it is as nothing. Nothing. Victoria speaks of the ant in the drain, not realising the rest of the house exists. Well, that's the human intellect. It's as nothing. The whole of infinity exists right here. The whole of omniscience, the whole of God exists right here. So get out of that drain pipe of the intellect and climb into omniscience itself. And then watch how that intellect is stimulated. Now we have spiritual intellect. And that is infinite and omnipresent. Now we have spiritual thought. And that is infinite and omnipresent. And better than that, we find that that spiritual thought and that spiritual intellect and the whole of omniscience and omnipotence and omnipresence and infinity and eternity and incorporeality happens for us. God thinks our thoughts. Now, what do you want to do today? What do you want to do this minute? Think your thoughts or have God thinking your thoughts? You choose. Choose ye this day. What do you want to do? Think about supply? Think about material supply? An ant in a drain pipe? Or do you want God to think of supply for you? What would you prefer? Choose ye this day. You want to think about life and health? And strength and beauty, vitality and the purpose of life and health and body? Yourself, the ant in the drain pipe, or do you want God to think life for you? God to think body for you. God to think beauty for you. Purpose for you. Vitality for you. Choose ye this day. How do you have God thinking for you? God being what you are and every fibre off into infinity of what you are. What is your role in this? Stay on the straight and narrow, the consciousness of oneness. Labour in the fields of oneness. Indeed, the harvest is rich. Rely, learn to rely. Have the discipline to learn to rely on oneness for everything from this moment on. And go back to that class we had. Was it the last or the one before last, where we heard what oneness is, what it contains. Be 
because I can promise you God was speaking, God still is. Omniscience was speaking and still is. Oneness was speaking and still is. Not Paul. Paul, luckily, thank God, thank oneness, is nothing of his own self. And so listen to what we are being given. Have the discipline now, from now on, from this minute on, to rely 100% for everything on oneness. Realize that if you have a sense of need, a sense of a question, a sense of wanting clarity, just for this moment as you're tipping over, it's fine, but realize what it is. Catch yourself quickly and realize, ah, what I really want, although my belief is misinterpreting it, is oneness. It appears as if I need some life or healing. Ah, but my belief is misinterpreting it. What I really want and need is what I actually am already, and that is oneness. So then turn immediately back into oneness and rely. Rely on oneness, realizing that this life that I sense as needing is actually fully manifest and already demonstrated for and as you this second in oneness, in your consciousness. And so by going there, you discover it. And the discovery of it is called, by material sense, a healing. It's not. It's the discovery of your truthful life. And yet, Outwardly, to material sense, it appears as a complete and utter healing. Because remember, no realization is unembodied. And so as we are filled full of a greater realization, a greater living presence of oneness, that greater living presence of oneness is always fully embodied. And if we just look at that body itself, we freeze our attention on the body itself, and we don't realize what the truth of it is, it appears as if it's completely healed. It's a miracle. The body has healed. No. Awareness has risen. Because and only because we have brought ourselves back into oneness and become interested in that oneness. The truth of being. The oneness of being. God itself. And now we have more conscious awareness of oneness and that conscious awareness is embodied always, automatically, infallibly. We're not involved in that. And it appears as the healing of the body. And the same with anything. If we have a sense of a lack of anything, a lack of supply, a lack of love, a lack of direction, a lack of purpose, a lack of reason, a lack of safety, a lack of home. If we lack any good thing whatsoever, the first thing to do is realize that belief is misinterpreting what it's witnessing and what the harmony, the truth, actually is, is the living awareness of oneness. And that truth exists fully manifest, that specific truth exists fully manifest and already demonstrated for you in consciousness this second, in oneness this second. And so go to oneness and find it. How? Seek oneness for itself alone. We are the being of oneness. We are a oneness being, spiritual being. Forever complete, whole, perfect, infinite, eternal. So go there to find your forever completeness, infinity, eternity. It's all fully manifest, all fully demonstrated already.
if you need a book, if you need a piece of information in a book, but you're not sure which book, which page, where is the answer? Fully manifest, fully demonstrated already for you. Where is it? What is it? One nurse. Oneness without taking thought for which book and which page. Lose the idea or the thought of which book and which page. Forget it. Lose it. That is a misinterpretation of what's actually needed. What is needed is a greater living consciousness of oneness. There, omniscience is fully manifest and fully demonstrated already for you. And by you simply seeking oneness without knowing, without a reason, without wishing to know, without wishing to have a reason, seek oneness for oneness in the awareness that oneness is all, you will witness the miracle of suddenly having that information. And it's a hundred times more than you thought it could be or would be. And it will either come as you're seeking oneness, or it'll come a few minutes or an hour later, or the next morning, as you're wandering around the world and you've completely forgotten about the whole thing. Suddenly the information comes popping up. There it is. Because you sought oneness for oneness without wanting that information. You just wanted oneness for oneness. That's how the miracle happens. Or you'll find yourself at some moment, either straight after your silence or some minutes or hours or the next morning later, you'll suddenly find yourself animated, pushed towards the bookshelf. And you find yourself thinking of a book. It's just fleeting. Oh, the title of that book. Don't let the mind come in. But always follow that first impulse and go to that book and just open it and there will be the very information you want. Don't think. You're now not a thinking being. You are a oneness being. You are a spiritual being. You are living in the conscious awareness that I am. I'm not lacking anything. I am. I may be consciously unaware of something at the moment, but that is wholly different from not having it. You catch that? That is wholly different. And there's the secret. I'm living and moving and having my being in and as God. Well, God is complete and whole. Therefore, I can't be missing anything and I'm not. I am whole and complete. Now then, what is my job? To become more aware of that completeness, if there seems to be a need, seems to be a lack. There isn't one, and I know that, and all I have to do is reach into my oneness, and there is the answer, there is the food, there is the supply, the wealth, the idea, the art, the creativity, the infinity. There it is, fully manifest, fully demonstrated. And it'll come, it'll be evident in any one of an infinite number of ways. It doesn't matter. Just follow your impulse. Listen. Listen for the rest of your eternity. Listen. Listen to oneness. Be open to oneness. And 
I'm being very reminded, even though we've said it a lot, but let's say it again. We must be open to oneness and we must listen to oneness for oneness. We obviously needed to hear that again. Not for what we think we want oneness for. Not what appears as if we need oneness for. We're not in the appearance world or being anymore. We are in spiritual being. From this very moment, as you now seek oneness alone and rely on oneness for absolutely everything of life, you can have as much life as you want. Life will pour through you. You can have as much form, good, plentiful form, as you want, all the treasures of heaven are right here, appearing as the treasures of earth, the abundance of earth, the wealth of earth, the success of earth. And you can have as much of it as you wish to have by the extent you're willing to be animated as your talent that's happening for you. Again, you're not involved, you're just saying yes. But what you're saying yes to is utter fulfillment for you because it's individual and unique you as talent. You can have as much as you want. It is infinite. Infinity is literally pouring through the expression of you, the presence of you. And all you're doing is seeking God for God, seeking oneness for Oneness, and then saying yes, yes, yes to it. Yes, I'm a willing servant. I'm a willing talent, a willing expression. Just like the forest is. 
just like the ocean is, just like all the wildlife in the earth is, all the grass, all the flowers, they are willing expressions, transparencies, willing to be animated by truth, by infinity, by omniscience. Yes, of course we're willing to be animated by truth, by omniscience, by infinity. Seek oneness alone. Rely on oneness alone. Make oneness your sole resource. Your sole life and body. Your sole awareness. Your sole wealth. Your sole client, student. Your sole product, service, treatment. Oneness is that. And you will witness such miracles of life and you will know, oh, how you know it has nothing to do with you. How you know you are simply a puppet, the divine willingness of truth. You will be in a pretty constant state of bliss, of peace. A pretty constant state. You will always be happy. Let anyone or anything try and wipe that smile off your face. He or she or it cannot. Because that anyone or anything that tries, you know as nothing. No entity, no power. So let it try as it may. It will soon wear itself out and die in its effort. You will live a life abundant and rich and beautiful of all things without a single effort, without needing anything. You are the owner of all good things and yet you need nothing. You want nothing. Your riches are spirit. Your treasure is spirit. And you always have the whole of it. You don't need a thing. You already have the whole of spirit. And that's the one thing. That one thing is infinite and omnipresent. Why would you need a finite little local thing to satisfy you? You have the infinite and omnipresent one thing, and that is God, Spirit. And yet, as you are being the presence of oneness, then all good sufficiency is always where you are, and you never need a stock of it. You do not need a storehouse. Again, we're, we're reminded. Listen to Jesus in Luke. Go and read Jesus in Luke, speaking of the lilies who do not toil and have no storehouses, have no barns. And yet, Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of those. And do you see that? Was not arrayed like one of these. Even he, the richest man on earth, the most successful man on earth, even he was not arrayed with as much of the earth's goods as the simple lily. 
And there Jesus is telling us, never be concerned about your raiment, about the goods of life, of the tangible experience, the objective experience. Never be concerned. As long as we are being the consciousness of oneness, as we've heard, then it is utterly impossible that utter sufficiency of all of the earth's good isn't right where we are. So never be concerned. And when it is God's goods, when it is God's raiment, when it is God's body and business and client and product and service and talent, I know you can believe as easily as I do that it is the best. God doesn't penny pinch. God doesn't go for cheap. It is the best of everything. Of course it is. And so, let us stop here tonight with the mission, with the Well, listen, for those of us who are ready, let us go off with the commandment. For those of us who are not ready, let us go off with the suggestion and the encouragement and hopefully the inspiration to 100% rely on oneness for everything of life. And then watch the miracles that are very, very quickly evident as your three-dimensional experience of that oneness you are now being. Do you catch that miracle of truthful consciousness? It is the consciousness we are being that witness is the image and likeness of itself as form. And infallibly so, without anyone or anything being able to stop it from being so. Because there isn't an anyone or anything out there. There isn't a separate power out there. Oneness is all power. Oneness is omnipotence. And where is it all? It is omnipresent right here. Be oneness. Rely 100% on oneness for absolutely everything of life. And you will infallibly witness the image and likeness. You are being as all form. Where the presence of oneness is, there is Liberty. There is freedom, there is life, there is abundance, there is joy, there is truth. And there is a lot of love. Thank you.